Hello, viewer. I'm Harold. Yes, I'm a llama. And no, I don't have an explanation for why you can hear the voice in my head. Instead, let's focus on the point of this video, which I'm telling you now. Over the next 180,000 milliseconds, or three mins, I'm going to show you how to get your cottage living lifestyle tight. So, let's eliminate the excessive exposition of content we're going to get into and begin. Welcome to Henford on Bagley, the hob. It boasts the rustic appeal of living in a cottage in the woods with the nearby convenience of a modern day village. Cozy shops, delightful villages, and a tolerable level of activity make for an inviting place to live out your wildest fantasy. Of course, I'm referring to canning. If I had thumbs or any number of fingers, it's all I'd ever do. 16 varietals of jam, custards, and veg, all jammed in a jar that can be kept for cooking later. Some, like the mouth-watering lettuce conserve, will entice you to eat it on the spot. If you can contain your craving, gather your cans or any of your favorite consumables for consumption into an easily placeable picnic that makes anywhere your dining den of decadence. Not courage enough? Fine, I'll give you the wool off my back to cross-stitch with. If you're not feeling confident enough to stitch from reference, there's over 34 designs to prick your pokers on. But let's move on to the real reason you're here. The hot, hot world of garden to tabes. One of the benefits of living in the countryside in a seductively charming cottage such as this is the equally alluring ability to grow your own food. And not the pre-packaged porcinis you buy at the store. These oversized crops will make even the most profesh gardener blush. In a natural transition that I'm currently accomplishing, let's discuss an activity everyone wants their hands dirty while doing. Cooking! The simple living lot challenge will make that magical fridge that's always full obsolete. Now, you'll have to face the facts of foraging for your ingredients yourself. When Gran Gran comes over for your mildly famous Yorkshire pudding, simply grab some eggs, borrow some milk from your cow named Tater, and mix together with flour from the local grocer. There were many other options that took too long to show being made, so please take a look at them now. Moving on to something I resemble, animals. The animal shed. What it lacks in interesting naming, it more than makes up for in its ability to confine animals to a space. Place it anywhere on your land and choose a cow, or the better option, llama, to inhabit it. We eat here, sleep here, and yes, die here. It's the perfect place for a romantic gesture. Let's assume you made the horrible mistake of choosing cow and did not immediately trade it for animal treats. Now that you're waist deep in the proverbial cow shiz, you'll have to navigate the oddly satisfying waters of befriending this bovine buddy of yours. Keep their mood level up if you want to have the tastiest milk game in the hob. Try different animal treats to create flavors that are so delish you'll be tipping for joy. Don't fly the coop just yet. This cock and bull story continues, y'all. The chicken coop offers the ability to domesticate up to eight foul feathered friends per coop. An apex animal, the chicken has no known predators, except most other animals, including foxes. The coop can be equipped with the Fox Be Gone, a clever upgrade that triggers an alarm whenever those handsy little thieves try to nick your eggs. One way to truly embrace the cottage living lifestyle is in one obviously direct way. Compete in the Finchwick Fair! Whether you have chicken or egg, cow or milk, crop or pie, there is a competition for you! But it's hard to call it fair when you're the flyest llama in town. So, is cottage living the lifestyle for you? As a llama who knows little else about the world, I'd say... probably. <laughs>